Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode and, you know, per usual, I got some stuff to show you. Um, so, first off, I found the latest wave of the Hot Wheels Boulevard series. I actually found it at Walmart, which, uh, you know, contains the Lancia, or the Corvette Z06, uh, the Pontiac Firebird, Buick Regal GNX, and uh, Porsche. So, pretty sweet little set. Um, I don't think this set's, I mean, this set probably out of all of them is going to be easiest to find the whole thing. Uh, probably the most popular one is going to be the Grand National, actually. And then maybe the Lancia. Um, that guy there. But, uh, I don't know. I think this set doesn't have, like, one of those cars that people are going to just, you know, grab all of. So it should be an easy one to complete, hopefully, if you find it at your local Walmart. They showed up, and then they went away, and then they came back. And, I mean, I imagine we'll see more of these. We'll just see what happens. Um, I may do a separate video on this. I don't know. We might open it up, open them all up. Not sure. We got a lot of other stuff to look at, though, including I did find the next wave of uh, Team Transport, uh, which I know so two of these are duplicates. I think the Volkswagen Bob Bug and the Nissan Skyline are dupes, but I think the new ones are the Chevy Vega and the Ford RS200. Now, I only picked up one, and of course it's this one. Uh, this is just super cool. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up. The van is not a licensed tooling, the rally van. Of course, the Ford RS200 is, and that's just really, really neat. So we're gonna go ahead and of course open those up. And uh, I'm excited about this one, actually, uh, for a team transport. That's pretty, pretty cool. Um, another thing I got then, uh, I don't think that's it. I think that's it for store finds. So just the uh, car culture set, or not car culture, boulevard set, and the team transport. Um, in the mail, actually, last week, I finally checked this off my list, this treasure hunt. Uh, it is a casting I collect. The Ferrari, well, Testarossa F512M. Um I collect both the Testarossa and the F512M. They're two different toolings, but yeah. Anyway, really cool. It's got a cracked blister. I got it for, I think, a decent deal. Look, it's already coming open. But anyway, we're going to open it, of course, the rest of the way in the next segment. And that's that. Uh, last week, also, I got some mail that I... Oh, one more store find. I forgot about this, guys. I got two Racing Champions Mint uh, in the store in a Meyer, and I picked up these two. Really cool. Um, now, we got the Bill Grumpy Jenkins 1966 Chevy Nova SS. I got this just because I thought it looked really, really cool in that like kind of racing livery. Um, I thought that was awesome. And then I got this Pontiac Catalina. And the reason why I picked this up is because this is a actual like Ertl vintage American muscle casting. It looks like the exhaust is a little messed up on the bottom. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. We're going to open this up. I'll show you what's really cool about this if you're not familiar. So, so stay tuned for that. Um, oh, I got some mail from Surplus Goodies. Good old Jimmy. And it's a good one. It's a good one. I didn't think I was going to end up with this uh, anytime soon, but, uh, you know, he made me an offer. I couldn't refuse on it, and now we have it there. So, sweet, white, lightning, red, red, ultra red. <laughs> the tires. I, you know, the tires are, I'm not a huge fan of the white tires. You guys know that, but I still am trying to check every single ultra red off of the list, and... This was one I knew it was going to be tough to get because it is a hobby exclusive. They're very, very limited. I'm guessing like 52-ish is probably the correct number of Ultra Reds on this. And it's kind of cool because I think the, the tire, the white tires are actually kind of dirty. So we will take a look at that. We're going to open it up because I don't keep any of this stuff carded, right? So, so there's that. And thank you very much, Jimmy. Uh, by the way, for offering that up. That was uh, very unexpected and very awesome. All right, next is the 
meal exclusive stuff I picked up from a Facebook seller. We've got this pink guy here. So two Jeeps, two Jeep Wranglers. So this this special edition one of 3600 pink thing. Um, my buddy Shirash, I think, got a set of these for me as well. So I'm gonna end up with two or one of e you know two of each of these, and that's fine. I can put some away. Um, you guys know I kind of hoard our auto world. But here is the other one, and this one is in yellow with the roof rack on the top. So they already did do a roof rack one. They did one in gray. So now here's one in yellow. Um, so this is pretty cool. It is uh, limited to 3,600 pieces as well. And um, I mean, it's all right. It's not my favorite auto world casting, but as an auto world completionist, I'm you know still on that train. So got to try to get everything. And including now, there's going to be two different ultra reds. There's an ultra red for this one. There's an ultra red for this one. I can't imagine they're going to go for too much money because it's not a square body, but they're still going to be, you know, somewhat uh, difficult to attain. And I'm not sure how many there are. Um, I'm guessing, well, I'm not even going to guess, maybe like 80 some, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe a hundred. I don't know. All right. So there's that. And then this guy I got as well. Um, there is another version of this. There's a white one that came out at the same time, Miho exclusive, uh, limited to 3,000 pieces, just like this one. This is kind of a faux um, General Lee. It's kind of cool, though. It's got the American flag on the top instead of a Confederate, which is kind of cool. And uh, anyway, this is pretty awesome, actually, pretty awesome looking. There's a white one, too. It that doesn't have the General Lee stuff, but there's a white uh, Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat. And... Um, I don't have it yet. My buddy Todd actually picked up a set of these for me as well. So I will have a white one for sure. Um, so we'll look at that down the road. But for today, we've got this one to take a peek at. So there's that one. Um, and then I also got a couple of mini GT. I still got to open. So a Land Rover Defender 110 in military camo. That's pretty cool. And a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ in Rosso Mars. And I think this is this is the first Aventador, right? From Mini GT. Is this a new tooling? It is, right? Because I don't think they come up with an Aventador. I am correct. Yes? I think so. All right. Maybe I'll double check that. Um, but really cool is we're going to take a look at this. I'm, I'm excited to look at a new Lambo tooling. At least I think it's a new Lambo tooling. So I don't know. Pretty good week, um, and I think we got enough to look at. I don't know if we really need to pop open these Boulevard, this Boulevard series. I may just make another video for that. Why not? And just I can get a little ten-minute video out on those, and you guys can watch that if you want. But we're gonna open up the rest of this stuff. So keep her tuned. All right. So let's go ahead and start with the rarest. Of the vehicles we are going to look at today, which is this uh, Children's Toy Closet Incorporated uh, Auto World Exclusive 1978 Chevy K10 Pickup 4x4. And here's a look around the card art if you missed it. I did feature the regular in a video two weeks back, I believe, so go check that out out along with the surplus goodies exclusives we also looked at those because he sent me those that week uh, but yeah um i don't think he has any more of these for sale but if he does they'll pop up on his ebay so check it out there or you can message him i don't know whatever he's uh, really easy to work with so but anyway uh we're gonna open this up here's a just a quick reminder of what the regular one looks like so here it is uh, interestingly, so I kind of made a comment about this, you know, the, it's kind of neat because the rust pattern and all that stuff is different from any of the other ones that have come out so far, which is good that they keep changing that up. And then, um, I also had made a comment though, that the golf logo I thought should have been dirty as well. And then I subsequently found out that it was supposed to be. So this golf logo was actually supposed to be. Uh, dirty and rusty however the licensing 
did not get approved for that. It had to go on clean. So Gulf Oil, I don't know why you did that necessarily. Why, um, you know, whoever's responsible for that. I don't know how this, you know, works 100%, but I thought that this truck would have looked a lot better with a dirty logo on a dirty truck. It just makes more sense. Why would you slap a clean logo right over the rust of a truck? I don't know. Um, it made more sense to me that the Gulf logo would have, you know, been on the truck for a long time, got rusted with it, you know, it makes for a better story, I guess. It's so weird too how clean it is underneath here. You can see the actual color of the truck. It's almost like it's blue, but it looks almost purple under there. But anyway, it's a it's a really cool thing. It just would be cooler, I thought, if it had a dirty golf logo. And apparently that's was the intent of of it originally. So too bad. Alright, so here is the ultra red and ultra rare ultra red. This thing is very limited, very expensive. And we'll go ahead and open it up and here she is I like the dirty white tires I mean if you're gonna do white tires dirty ones are cool look at this so what's different about this one obviously besides the tires well it's got an ultra red body and that's it and then they put the rust um, graphic right over the top including a clean golf logo again definitely would have looked a little better you can kind of get an idea of how they do this tampo action because you can see it's almost like a skin that goes over like a decal almost you can see it's kind of chipped in the front right there where you can see the ultra red coming through let me see if we can zoom into that so this is like layered over the top so they've done these a few different ways. I think if we zoom real in here, let's see how close we can get and stay focused. Um, you might see some pixelation in it. Um, but this is the way I think that like Tarmac works and you know kind of do their graphics. They're like almost like a clear decal that covers the entire side of the vehicle or entire surface of the vehicle. Look at that. That's kind of neat, actually, too. That's not intentional. This little right there. Something scraped down the window. Or someone ran their finger down. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of cool. Some dirt. More dirt on the tires. Base is relatively clean. Um, I don't know. It's awesome. I... It, it, I like I said, it's really, really limited. They're tough to get. It's really, really cool to be able to get a few of these. And uh, I'm trying to get all of them. It's just, it's going to be quite the feat. Getting any of these hobby exclusive ultra reds is just, it's a difficult task. They're expensive. I and mean, what are you going to do? All right. So there's that. Let's take a peek then. Um, we'll stick with Auto World for a little bit. Why not? Um, let's get these Jeeps out of the way and I apologize I did not pre-cut these here's a look at the card not a ton to look at I do like that these came with the boxes that's fantastic I still am a huge fan of these auto world boxes I wonder how much more they charge uh, to include the box if you're going to do a hobby exclusive but I just like having these because I store these boxes and then eventually if I ever want to, you know, store the collection, I could store them right in there. Um, the, however, this isn't going to fit in there. This is uh, a little insert. And they don't include an insert like in there to nestle the casting. Um, in some of the other ones with the other cars and other castings and stuff, this would fit inside. But this does not. At least I don't think it, it's going to. Yeah, I mean, if it does, it, it's going to balloon in the box but yeah but here it is in yellow roof rack on top we got a wobbler wobbly wheel it's all right and just a basic jeep casting i mean it's it's cool again for you jeep fans you guys are going to really enjoy this because uh, jeep people really 
just really like their Jeeps. I'm just not, I'm not a Jeep person. I'm not a cat person either. So, you know, different strokes for different folks, right? All right, so there's that. And then uh, we've got the one in pink. And the car is the same, except for it just has a pink tint to it instead of a yellow tint to it. You guys don't really need to see it. I'm going to go ahead and see it up close. I'm going to go ahead and cut it open. But again, it comes with a box, and that's very welcome. And there's the pink one. And it looks like the insert is the same size, so it's not going to fit in the box of that. But, there it is. No roof rack on this one. Just a wonderful pink color. MJ exclusive on the plate. Uh, MJ exclusive on both the plates. I don't know. What do you guys think about these? And they're coming out. I think two more are coming out. Two different colors. Two more different colors. It'd be interesting. I'd like to know like who is in charge of the MJ exclusive like what they decide to produce it's just it's kind of interesting their selection you know they did the low riders that that was you know likely they thought that was going to be a hit and i think it was okay i don't think it was as much of a hit as they intended it to be um they've done some square bodies that have been um kind of cool and then you know they've done a bunch in the past too so they've done some really cool stuff and um like the dirty christine and stuff like that that one was a really really awesome one uh but it's just interesting what they choose to do so or how that process works i really don't know someday i will learn here is the dodge challenger srt okay more mind-blowing too is they made less of these than those jeeps like are those jeeps really going to be more popular than a, a hellcat with kind of a faux general lee livery I don't think so. I think this is going to be way more popular. You know, I could be wrong, but I doubt it. And this one, of course, comes with the box and an insert that likely will fit in the box. That's a double bonus. Open it up real quick. Here's your box. And here's your Hellcat. Now, this is cool. I really don't like a ton of graphics on this, but I like that this is kind of an homage to that show. Again, that's the flag you get on the top. Which looks actually really awesome. And some other sponsorship logos and stuff like that. Is this made after a real one-to-one -one car? Somebody let me know. Did someone make this car? Or did they make this car? I don't know. Is this made, um, modeled after a real one-to-one -one car? I would be um, interested to know that. So if you do know that, let me know in the comments, of course, below. I like the, uh, the black trim around the wheel wells and stuff like that. I think that looks pretty awesome. Um, real good. Should we open the hood? see how easy it is to open not easy so we're just gonna leave her shut it's got a motor under there though I guarantee it MJ exclusive for the plate Goodyear tires I love these rims those look really good and yeah this is a really cool release so definitely recommend it the white one's real basic but it still looks really cool and I can't wait to add that one to my collection as well. And then again, two different ultra reds. So there's an ultra red of this one and there's an ultra red of the, um, the white one as well. So that's four ultra reds. I got to track down now just from these MJ exclusives and these ones, the one for this guy is going to be pricey guaranteed. She is not going to be cheap. It just ain't going to be the white one ultra for that one probably be a little less expensive but guaranteed that ain't gonna be cheap either the uh the ultra reds for these challengers people are a fan of them you know so 
they can get up there in in price range. Uh, what should we look at next? Let's do the, I guess, since we're doing boxed die cast, and of course I forgot to rip the cellophane off of these, but we'll go ahead and do um, Mini GT next. So we've got uh, Land Rover Defender 110 and Military Camo number 237. Got your uh, licensed holograph official TSM model. Um, let's just see if we can... Their cellophane is... They didn't cheap out on this. <laughs> it's like hard to rip open with your by hand. You have to cut it. Oh, man. That's just part of the fun here on my YouTube channel is struggling with packaging. All right, let's open this up the wrong way and pull it out. What do you guys think of the new Mini GT uh, box design? Do you like it better than the old stuff? I do. I like it because it's different colors and stuff. I think that's pretty good. It's nice and clean look, real basic. Got a picture of the car, got the Mini GT logo. I think it looks really nice. The the older one that was all white and had like that, I don't know, weird logo in it or whatever. Not as cool as this, I think. You guys let me know what you think. They've done some different box designs. And I love that it's a box. I love that this fits inside the box. All right, this is very neat. Uh, a lot neater than I thought it was going to be. In fact, you guys are just going to have to hang on a second. I got to grab the camel one, and I'm going to show you why in a second. I think we got some new tooling stuff going on here. And we do. Okay, so we've seen this car with a roof rack before, correct? Yes, we've seen it as a rally uh, vehicle, a camel livery but this is quite different so the ra the roof rack is actually way different not only is it not loaded with stuff it's actually a different shape altogether see how it kind of goes up like that this goes straight across um, and then the ladder design is also different uh, trailer hitch is basically the same I almost wish they wouldn't include that trailer hitch on there it's cool, but it takes away a little bit of the realism of the vehicle, I think, just because, you know, real trailer hitches don't really look like that. I get it. They want it to be functional, and they want it to be able to pull a trailer. But, uh, yeah, in my opinion. Now, the other different thing is, look, this is a different tool base. Are these, yeah, they are. They're metal. Okay, so these little foot step thingies are metal. And they're part of the base. So this is a different tool base uh, than this guy. So the, the mud flaps were always, which I love that the, me, the mud flaps are metal. They're part of the actual metal casting. So they're going to be very difficult to break off. And then same with these little steps. They're not very fragile because they are actually thick metal. So that's different and that's really cool they're not on this one so of course this one's got the snorkel and stuff like that this one doesn't have that so yeah i love these def the land rover defenders i think they did a great job the mirrors again are like a rubber material again good choice because they don't break off i just like mini gt's philosophy you know you know you guys know i've been talking about it for a while this one also has a sunroof or moonroof, or whatever you want to call it, an opening in the top. Really cool. All right, so I like these Land Rovers. I think I've got every version. Well, most of them anyway, except for the Golf one. I think that's the one I didn't pick up. And, you know, I might just have to grab one just because, just to kind of complete the collection. I think then I'll have them all. I'll have to check, though. The Dirty Camel one was definitely a must. And this one I wasn't so sure about, but like, you know, I got them all, the other ones, and I might as well grab this one. And I'm glad I did now. 
because it does look pretty cool in camouflage. All right, next is the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. And I, I think I'm correct in saying that this, and I'm looking at my like display case that's full of Mini GT, and I'm just trying to peek at the Lambos in there. And I, I'm pretty sure this is new. This is new, right? Uh, they've done, what, the Huracan, the Hur, you know, some other ones. They did some Liberty Walk ones. This one is a stock Aventador SVJ, so it's not like Liberty Walk or anything like that. This is definitely a new tooling. All right, 198 Lamborghini licensing on the back there, TSM model, genuine. It's a left-hand drive. I never really pay attention to whether or not these things are right-hand or left-hand drive or whatever. I know they make both versions, I think, of them for most of the vehicles. And I don't really, I don't care basically which one I get. But yeah, okay. So doesn't disappoint right off the bat. I would say right now, if you are a Lamborghini fan, Mini GT is your brand. Because they've come out with the best looking modern Lambos the most detail look at that and this isn't some like cheap like super flexible plastic this is rigid it's on there good it doesn't feel very fragile it is a fragile i mean you wouldn't want to hand this to a little kid and have him play with it it would get destroyed it definitely would the mirrors would eventually break off you know the spoiler might not might break off fairly easy but as far as like the paint goes and everything they just have this down pretty basic base they usually are basic though and i don't care they don't need to put a lot of time into the base of the car how often do you sit there and stare at the base of the car i say that but the car we're going to look at in a little bit here has a very detailed base and i'll explain how cool it is in a minute so i'm going to contradict myself but uh it's not like high on the priority list this thing is sick so yeah i'm going to say that's a win i am Super stoked about that. I'll get it in every single freaking color that they come out with it. I hope they actually come out with it in white because the stark white on this style Lambo, you get to really see a lot of the detail. Um, a lot of the detail comes out in it. So I can't wait uh, for it to come out in like a stark, like bright gloss white. I think that's going to look awesome. So I wouldn't doubt that they are putting it out in that color. I hope they do. But yeah, and she rolls, of course. It's just what a cool brand, right? They come up with a super detailed model like that and a super detailed model like this. You know, they're not pigeonholing themselves into one category of vehicle. And I don't know, it seems like everything they do is desirable. You know, they do do a lot of the GTR stuff. There's some stuff I'm not a huge, like, I won't pick up every single one. But again, every time I pull new GT, new Mini GT, I'm like, geez, should I just go after all of the one, all of them? But... Nah, I can't. I can't do it. Auto World's got to be the only brand I do that for. Plus, if you get into, really get into Mini GT and you start getting into, like, the Chase models, which are um, Miho exclusives. <sighs> yeah, you'll go broke pretty fast. All right. So, there you go. There's that. Next, let's take a look at this. Now, I just said I was going to contradict myself, saying that bases weren't important. And then we're going to look at this super detailed one right here. So this is a Racing Champions Mint Pontiac Catalina, 1962, right? Uh, why is this cool? They're, well, they're limited to 2,000 pieces, so pretty limited. Racing Champions is kind of hard to come by. This is 2020 release one. So it's already a year old. I think it came out real late. Um, the cool thing about this, though, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, is this is an Ertl Vintage American Muscle Casting. And that's why I picked this up. <clears throat> so, check out the base. Super detailed. And why is that neat? Well, these are separate pieces. So the exhaust and stuff is separate, the little axle and stuff, drive shaft and all that, little transmission piece. This piece right here, the front suspension and stuff. And you can see it says Ertl on the base. 
So very, very detailed. These are separate little plastic pieces on the base, and they cover up the screws that are holding the casting together, which is kind of neat. Um, this isn't the best casting that they come out with, but it's pretty cool. It's got separate piece for the front, and it's got a separate piece for the back, sort of like a, well, it's got inserted uh, headlights up front and then painted taillights on the separate piece in the back. So the other kind of neat thing about this is not only does it have an opening hood, as you can see the motor in there, it also has an opening, at least it should, have an opening trunk. And if it doesn't, then they might have cast it shut, but it should have an opening trunk. Did they, did they stop the opening trunk on this? Nope, they didn't. It opens. And there's your opening trunk. Not like there's much in there. It looks like the screw hole that they drilled drilled right through the luggage compartment, uh, or the luggage thing, whatever that is. Well, toolkits, probably a jack or whatever. Um, but here's an older, actual Ertl release. You can see the base on this one. Slightly more detail on these. It's got the blue paint right there. That's pretty much the only thing that's different about it. Um, and then, of course, this round one has an opening trunk and the actual little toolkit or whatever it is in there is actually painted silver and it's not drilled through and then uh, of course the motor's got oh, the motor doesn't have a little bit more detail on it no it's about the same same detail on the motor but anyway that's why i grabbed this because i saw this i'm like oh that is an ertl casting so i gotta have it and that's why i picked it up so what do you guys think about that? Anytime I see these vintage American Muscle castings for cheap, I grab them. They're just, they're cool. They're, Erta was really trying to do something as close to 118 scale as possible in 164. And it was kind of a cool concept. And I don't think they lasted very long, but, and I don't even know how many toolings there are. I might even have an example of pretty much every tooling they put out. And someday, maybe I should just do a video on my collection of those. And that might be fun. Um, all right, so that's that. And then we got this guy, the other racing champions. This is from the same series as Bill Grumpy Jenkins, 1966 Chevy Nova SS. Here's that bad boy. So again, why do I like this? Because it's got that vintage racing livery to it. And I just like that classic graphic design and stuff like that. That style. That art style. I think it's just really, really cool. Uh, this is just a legit older Racing Champs casting. It's got Racing Champs stamped into the base there. It's been around for some time. And it's an NHRA national record holder. I think it's a bit bigger than 164 scale, which some racing champions castings kind of ran that way. Um, but I think it's really cool. Again, the design. I like the design. All right, so there's that. And let's see, we got two more two more things to look at here. We're going to look at some Hot Wheels. Let's start with this guy right here. Here's our broken blister Ferrari F512M. This cat, I mean, this is old right 1999 treasure hunt you can find these on ebay for generally somewhere between 30 and 50 dollars depending i think i got this one way on the lower end of that spectrum and i just had to get it because i'm starting to get closer and closer to completing my ferrari f512m casting or variation list and of course this one was still on it now there is a one that has a black base on it that I believe is a lot harder to find. Um, so be on the lookout for that. I don't know if I'm really going to bother trying to hunt that one down, just a base variation. Um, but maybe sometime in the future. They haven't used this casting in a really long time, from as I recall. And of course they're not going to use it currently because they don't have a Ferrari license to be able to put this out. but it is pretty cool you know and that's the weird thing so like if they had a license they made castings for it they made toolings for it and stuff like that and then you lose a license and you can't use any of those toolings it's kind of sad right 
No? Maybe? Yeah, kind of. It's too bad. Um, it should be like, well, we own the toolings. We should be able to, but I guess they can't. You know, that's, And again, I don't know all that licensing stuff works and stuff like that. I should talk to my brother. My brother's an attorney. And uh, he does work with intellectual property. So, you know, maybe I should chat with him about that and have an idea how that works. Um, but yeah. Anyway. There it is. All right, so that's that. And lastly, let's take a look at this team transport. Yeah, I passed on that one. I might end up getting this Vega, though, the Pro Stock, because I do like the casting. Um, I just, you know, I'm out of room for these trucks. This one at least comes with a van and a trailer, so I thought that that was also kind of a cool, different thing about it. I do wish they would have just licensed the van. It, it Honestly, it would have been fine. Why don't they just use that Super Van 2? Not Super Van 2. Super Van that they had put out and somehow adapted a trailer hitch to it and use that. I don't know why necessarily they didn't do that. I don't know what the deal was or that they couldn't get licensing or didn't. It's some sort of budgeting, I'm sure, as to why. But regardless, we do get kind of a cool fantasy casting van. I don't know where else we're going to see this. I know another thing I think that they tried to do, and I think this was an interview with Lamley, and I forget who he was talking to, but I think another thing that they tried to do, maybe Steve Vanderveen or something. I don't remember. But uh, the, they wanted these to be open instead of closed in between like the rails on the, the roof rack thing. And they weren't able to do that. And I don't think they were, they probably also weren't able to not have a roof rack because then the top of the casting would have had to been metal, probably, or a big window, and, you know, they're just limited. So that's what you guys got to realize. I mean, when you're looking at Hot Wheels, they have to keep things within a strict, like, budget, basically, or, like, you know, there's a concern there with... Uh, how much these castings cost to produce and tool and what the limitations are. And they have to work within those limitations. And working within those limitations kind of creates the Hot Wheels look, you know, that you know and love. And, you know, undoubtedly, Hot Wheels are still the most collected, uh, you know, 164-ish scale vehicle. You know, they sell... A lot more Hot Wheels than they sell anything else, and by a huge margin. At least in America, for sure. You know, I don't know, worldwide ish, but, uh, you know, they're hot. This is fantastic, though, this RS. It's really, really cool. Super cool. I am loving it. So that's really worth the cost of admission right there. Um, the trailer, pretty decent. It's got some substantial blocks here for the wheels. So the car's really not going anywhere. You probably could fit, you know, uh, the uh, Testarossa are just a little too wide. Um, let's try, this is going to be too wide too, I think, for the trailer. Yep, that's too wide for the trailer. Um, anything else? <laughs> Why not? Hit that. Ironically, this fits. It's kind of cool, too, like with a car on the trailer. The trailer kind of stands alone. Rolls by itself. It's got a good balance to it. Uh, let's go ahead and hook it up. You can practice your trailer backing up skills in 164 scale. What do you guys think about this? I think it's pretty cool. All right, that's got to be it. We are out of time and out of diecast to look at, except for that car culture series, but or not car culture, boulevard series, but we will get to that in a future video. All right, thank you guys very much for watching again. Uh, always appreciate your support, uh, comments, all that stuff, you know, all that fun stuff. Thank you. Have a good day.